Okay, so get ready, because today we're diving into a world of mystery. Um, one that might make you want to dust off your decoder ring and brush up on your secret society knowledge. Oh, I am so ready for this. We're talking ancient wisdom, cryptic texts, and whispers of a book so elusive it makes finding a first edition of, like, Don Quixote look like uh, a walk in the park. And you know how much I love a good historical puzzle? This idea that there's, like, a hidden layer to history, a secret network of knowledge passed down through time, it's fascinating. Exactly. And today's source, this YouTube video we found, claims to pull back the curtain on some of those secrets. It's all about a book called La Santissima Trinosofia. Ooh, Trinosofia, that sounds promising. Just the name already sounds like it holds the key to unlocking some ancient mystery. Right, so La Santissima Trinosofia. What can you tell us about this book? Well, according to the video, it's incredibly rare. They say there's only one known copy supposedly tucked away in some municipal library in Troya, France. Imagine that, a book that could potentially rewrite history, just gathering dust on a shelf somewhere. Seriously, it kind of makes you wonder what other treasures are hidden away in libraries, you know, just waiting to be rediscovered. Right, it gives a whole new meaning to overdue book finds. Ah, no kidding. <laughs> huh. But um, the plot thickens because the video also links this book to, get this, the ever enigmatic Count of St. Germain. Okay, I'll bite. Who is this Count of St. Germain? Mm -hmm. He sounds like a character straight out of, like, I don't know, a Dumas novel or something. Right, he's like the epitome of mystery. Okay. Think of him as a real-life Renaissance man, but with, like, an extra dash of mystique. He was known for his knowledge of alchemy, for one thing. Alchemy, okay, now we're talking. Yeah, he was also a talented musician, and apparently he had this way of charming European royalty. A regular rock star, then. Pretty much. But here's the thing. Some people even whispered that he possessed the secret to immortality. Immortality. Okay, now that's a claim I'd like to see some historical evidence for. Yeah. But, all right, so we've got a potentially explosive book and a shadowy author with, it seems, a flair for the dramatic. What's the connection? How do they come together? Well, the video claims that St. Germain was the author of La Santissima Trinosofia and that it contains, like, the culmination of his vast wisdom, all his esoteric knowledge. So this book is like his magnum opus. Exactly. And the video even suggests that the book's title, Trinosophia, meaning Three Wisdoms, hints at the interconnected traditions at the heart of St. Germain's teachings. Three Wisdoms. That definitely sounds like we're about to embark on a quest for knowledge. I'm ready. <laughs> What are these three pillars of Trinosophia? Well, the video points to Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermetic Freemasonry. Now, each tradition is fascinating on its own, but the video claims that St. Germain, he sought to, like, weave them together to reveal a deeper layer of understanding that was hidden within their, uh, their combined wisdom. Okay, I think we need to unpack this a bit. What exactly do we even mean by uh, Gnosticism? So Gnosticism, in a nutshell, it's a philosophy that emphasizes... Um, personal spiritual knowledge above all else. They call it gnosis. Imagine a group of people dedicated to, like, unlocking the divine spark within themselves. So less about blind faith and more about this personal quest for enlightenment. You got it. And this emphasis on personal experience, it's like, a key to understanding how Gnosticism connects to the other two traditions in La Santissima Trinosophia. Which brings us to, um, Rosicrucianism. Hmm. What can you tell us about them? I feel like they're always surrounded by secrecy and rumors. Oh, absolutely. Even their origins are a bit of a mystery, but they're often described as this like secret brotherhood dedicated to studying these ancient mystical texts and um, unlocking the secrets of the universe, basically. Unlocking the secrets of the universe? How? Through a blend of science and mysticism, they were particularly interested in alchemy. Okay, I have to admit, the idea of alchemy has always fascinated me. Turning lead into gold, discovering the elixir of life. It sounds like something straight out of like a fantasy novel. It's easy to get caught up in the more fantastical elements, right? But at its core, alchemy was as much about inner transformation as it was about, you know, manipulating physical substances. So it's about more than just the material. Yes. And the Rosicrucians, they believed that by understanding these hidden principles that govern the natural world, they could unlock the secrets of spiritual transformation, too. So they were trying to crack the code of both the physical and the spiritual realms. You got it. They believed that those two realms were uh, inextricably intertwined. Fascinating. Okay, so... Where does Hermetic Freemasonry fit into all of this? Right, so picture this. It's a branch of Freemasonry that incorporates Hermetic principles. So think. 
ancient Egyptian wisdom blended with Greek philosophy. A potent combination. Right. And they were um, very interested in unlocking hidden knowledge, perfecting themselves through, you know, moral and intellectual pursuits. So they were like the elite scholars and thinkers of their time, always trying to improve themselves and in turn the world around them. That's a great way to put it. And like the Rosicrucians, they placed a strong emphasis on symbolism and allegory. The idea that some truths were best conveyed through hidden meanings and, uh, you know, secret teachings. Secret teachings. Okay, now that sounds intriguing. Is that where this whole idea of secret societies guarding hidden knowledge comes from? It's definitely a part of it. These groups, they often shrouded themselves in secrecy, partly to protect themselves from persecution, but also because they believed that certain knowledge, it um, it wasn't meant for everyone. It was like for initiated eyes only. All right, for... exactly. Yeah. They believed that this knowledge had to be revealed gradually as an individual progressed on their spiritual path. So it's less about keeping secrets for the sake of power and more about safeguarding knowledge, revealing it to those who are ready to receive it. Exactly. That's the idea, at least in theory. Of course, throughout history, there have always been those who you know, exploit the allure of secret societies and hidden knowledge for their own gain. Yeah, power can be a tempting mistress, that's for sure. But let's bring this back to La Santissima Trino Sofia for a second. This book supposedly weaves together these three really complex traditions, Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermetic Freemasonry. How does it actually do that? What's the video say? Well, that's where things get really interesting. Okay, so we're talking about this book, La Santissima Trino Sofia, that supposedly brings together Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermetic Freemasonry. Mm. But how? What's the common thread that connects these traditions? It's like, what's the secret sauce, right? Well, the video suggests that the book isn't just like presenting these traditions side by side. It's more like it's revealing a hidden thread that connects them all. A common goal that um, runs through all of them. A common goal, like some kind of esoteric endgame. Okay, now you've got my attention. Think of it like this. The unification of love and science, a world where knowledge and compassion are, you know, intertwined. And this unified force guides humanity towards a higher understanding of, well, of ourselves and the universe. So it's not just about, like, decoding ancient symbols or mastering secret rituals. It's about using that knowledge to actually make a difference in the world. That's how the video seems to frame it, at least. It suggests that La Santissima Trinosophia is more than just a collection of, you know, esoteric ideas. It's like a blueprint for real transformation, both personal and societal. Okay, I'm hooked. How does the video claim this book lays out this path to transformation? Hmm. What are some of the key concepts it explores? Well, one of the most prominent themes is this idea of hidden knowledge. The belief that there are these layers of reality that are beyond our everyday perception, just waiting to be discovered, you know? It's like that feeling you get when you stumble upon a secret passage in an old house. Yeah. You can't help but wonder what other secrets might be hidden in plain sight. Right, exactly. And the video argues that La Santissima Trinosofia gives us the tools to actually unlock those hidden doors. To see beyond the veil of, I don't know, the mundane and glimpse these deeper truths that connect us all. So it's a good guidebook for unlocking hidden knowledge, but also for understanding how to actually use that knowledge to transform ourselves and the world around us. Precisely. And this is where the video draws some um, interesting connections between La Santissima Trinosofia and, believe it or not, the symbolism embedded within Gothic cathedrals. Hold on. Gothic cathedrals? Like those massive structures with the stained glass and the gargoyles. What do those have to do with ancient wisdom and secret societies? I'm intrigued. So the video suggests that these cathedrals, they weren't just built as places of worship. They were designed as these repositories of esoteric knowledge. Their very architecture reflects principles of like sacred geometry and cosmic harmony. So they're like giant stone textbooks just waiting for someone to decipher their hidden messages. That's the claim, yeah. And the video actually points to some specific examples. Take the rose window, for instance. You know, those intricate circular windows you often find above the entrance of a cathedral. Oh, yeah, sure. They're beautiful, but I never thought they held a deeper meaning. Well... The video claims that the rose window, with its intricate patterns and vibrant colors, actually symbolizes the interconnectedness of all things. It represents this, like, divine light of creation that's radiating outwards and connecting everything to a single source. Wow, I've always loved looking at stained glass. 
but I never really considered its deeper meaning. It's like the entire cathedral becomes this metaphor for spiritual awakening. That's exactly the point the video seems to be making. And it gets even more interesting when you consider the alleged connection between La Santissima Trino Sofia and, get this, the Knights Templar. Okay, now we're talking history, A and D mystery. The Knights Templar, those warrior monks shrouded in legend. Yeah. How do they fit into all of this? The video suggests that the Templars, they weren't just these skilled warriors, they were also like seekers of ancient knowledge. It claims that during their time in the Holy Land, they uncovered secret texts and artifacts containing this esoteric wisdom that had been lost for centuries. So they were like, what, the Indiana Jones of their time, unearthing ancient relics and battling shadowy forces. Right. And the video suggests that La Santissima Trinosofia may have been part of this lost wisdom that was passed down through, you know, secret Templar lineages. Okay, now that is a theory I can get behind. Secret societies, hidden knowledge, a book that could potentially rewrite history. But if this book is so powerful, why is it hidden away? Why not just share its wisdom with the world? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And as you might expect, the video offers a few possible answers. One idea it puts forth is that knowledge itself can be a bit of a double-edged sword, you know? Like with great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. The video suggests that certain truths, if they fell into the wrong hands, could be, I don't know, misused, even twisted to do harm. It's like La Santissima Trinosofia contains this incredibly potent knowledge that needs to be approached with caution, with a certain level of um, spiritual maturity and discernment. So not exactly something you'd hand out as a party favor? Probably not. It's more like an ancient artifact that needs to be handled with care, understood within its proper context. Okay, I get it. But then how do we unlock the wisdom of a book like La Santissima Trinosofia? Do we need to infiltrate a secret society, crack ancient codes, book a one-way flight to France, and hope for the best? Well, that's where things get a little more, shall we say, philosophical. The video argues that the real journey isn't about finding some physical book. It's about embarking on an inner quest for knowledge. So less about external exploration and more about internal discovery. You got it. It suggests that the real treasures, the real wisdom, it's found not within the pages of some book, but within ourselves. Okay, that resonates, but it's not like we can just meditate our way to enlightenment and unlock all the secrets of the universe, right? The video seems to imply that it's a bit more uh, nuanced than that. It suggests that while La Santissima Trino Sofia is, you know, shrouded in mystery, it's not meant to be completely inaccessible. So what's the key? How do we tap into that wisdom? The video highlights the importance of really understanding the core principles represented by Gnosticism, Rosicrucianism, and Hermetic Freemasonry. It suggests that by studying these traditions, even without like joining a specific group, we can start to see the world through a different lens, a lens that reveals the interconnectedness of all things. So it's less about, say, joining a secret society and more about cultivating a mindset of curiosity and you know seeking out knowledge and then applying it to our own lives. Exactly. And the video suggests that this journey of discovery, it's an ongoing process, not some destination we reach. So lifelong learning then, always seeking to expand our understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Exactly. And through this constant seeking, this questioning, this exploration of different perspectives, that's how we start to unlock the hidden wisdom within ourselves and the universe around us. I love that perspective. It's about embracing the journey, not just chasing after some elusive prize. But before we get too lost in this maze of speculation, let's talk about the source for a moment. We've been going deep on this YouTube video, but we don't actually know much about the creators. Who are they? And what's their angle in all of this? That's a great question. And unfortunately, the video itself doesn't offer much in the way of clues. We don't know their credentials, their backgrounds, their motivations for creating this particular video. It's a bit of a mystery. So they're like the mysterious figures in their own story, lurking in the shadows. It definitely adds another layer of intrigue to the whole thing, right? It makes you wonder, are they just passionate enthusiasts who are sharing their love of, I don't know, history and mystery? Are they insiders with access to information that's not readily available to the... Um, to the public? Or are they, you know, weaving a compelling narrative based on speculation and conjecture? Those are all excellent questions. And unfortunately, we don't have definitive answers. But it is fascinating to consider the possibilities, isn't it? It just reminds us to be discerning consumers of information, to approach these claims with a healthy dose of skepticism, but also, you know, with a sense of wonder and curiosity.
Absolutely. It's about embracing that sense of wonder and, and remembering that sometimes the most compelling mysteries are those that leave us with more questions than answers. Very true. But before we get too lost in the maze of speculation, let's bring it back to La Santissima Trinosofia for a moment. We've talked about its connections to, like, secret societies, ancient wisdom, even Gothic cathedrals. But the video also touches on this concept called continuity of consciousness. What's that all about? Continuity of consciousness. It sounds like something you'd find etched on like a, I don't know, a mysterious amulet or something. Not exactly something you'd expect to find in a dusty old book. Hmm. So what's the video's take on this whole continuity of consciousness thing? Well, it's this really fascinating idea that kind of challenges our traditional view of death, you know? what happens afterwards and all that. So not exactly a pearly gates scenario. Not quite. The video claims that La Santissima Trinosofia, much like those ancient Egyptian texts that the Hermetic Freemasons were so fascinated by, suggests that our consciousness, it doesn't just like disappear when we die. Okay, hold on. So what, it like goes on vacation or something? Well, not vacation, exactly. But the idea is that it endures in some way, maybe even merging with a larger, like, universal consciousness. Merging with a universal consciousness. Okay, now you're blowing my mind a little. Right. What does that even mean? How do you merge with a universal consciousness? Okay, so imagine, like, a drop of water falling into a vast ocean, right? The drop is still made of water, but it's no longer, like, separate. It's no longer bound by its own individual form, you know. So our individual consciousness is like that drop. And death is the moment we rejoin the ocean, the uh, the universal consciousness. It's a beautiful image, I have to say, but it also raises a lot of questions for me. Right. And one question the video really grapples with is, well, the purpose of this whole thing. If our consciousness ultimately just returns to its source, then what's the point of this individual journey in the first place? I mean, that's like the ultimate existential question, isn't it? Why are we here? What's it all about? And the video actually offers a really interesting perspective on this. It suggests that La Santissima Trina Sofia doesn't necessarily see life's purpose as like achieving some grand goal or reaching a specific destination, you know? So it's not about winning some cosmic game of life. Not really. It's more about seeing life as this ongoing process of, you know, learning, growing, experiencing. The idea is that every experience, every joy, every sorrow, every triumph, every heartbreak, it all kind of contributes to this like richness of our individual consciousness. Mm -hmm. And in turn, it contributes to the evolution of this universal consciousness that we're all a part of. So it's less about reaching some finish line yeah. and more about like savoring the journey itself, embracing the ups and downs that make us who we are. That's a great way to put it. And it brings us back to this idea of Trinosophia, the three wisdoms, and how they all play into this perspective. Right. Gnosticism, with its emphasis on seeking these direct spiritual experiences, Rosicrucianism, this blend of science and mysticism that tries to like unlock the universe's secrets, and then Hermetic Freemasonry, this focus on you know, moral and intellectual development. They all kind of weave together. Exactly. And the video argues that by like weaving these three threads together, La Santissima Trinosofia is encouraging us to approach life as this incredible opportunity, an opportunity for spiritual growth, for expanding our understanding of, you know, ourselves and the universe around us, and for ultimately contributing our own unique experiences back to this grand tapestry of existence. It's a beautiful concept, really, but how do we actually put this into practice in our own lives? Well, the video offers some practical suggestions, too. It emphasizes the importance of, like, cultivating inner peace, developing our self-awareness, and trying to live in alignment with our, you know, our true nature. Those are definitely worthy goals, but they also seem a little abstract. You know, like, how do you actually cultivate inner peace amidst the chaos of everyday life? Well, that's where those practices we talked about earlier come into play, right? Things like meditation, practicing mindfulness, even just taking time for introspection. Those things can help us quiet the noise of the world and connect with this like deeper sense of peace within ourselves. So it's about creating space for stillness and reflection. Yeah. Really tuning into that inner wisdom. Exactly. And the video also stresses the importance of, you know, recognizing that we're not alone on this journey. We are all interconnected, all part of this grand cosmic dance, as we were saying. That idea of interconnectedness is powerful. Mm -hmm. It makes you realize that like our actions, our thoughts, even our energy, it all kind of ripples outwards and impacts the world around us. Yeah, precisely. And this realization can be incredibly empowering. It reminds us that even these small acts of 
you know, kindness, compassion, even just understanding, they can have this ripple effect. It's like we can each contribute to creating a more harmonious and, I don't know, a more enlightened world in a way. That's a hopeful thought to end on. So after this deep dive into uh, into La Santissima Trino Sofia, what's the final takeaway you're left with? Well, I think this video, whether or not every claim it makes about this book is true, it really reminds us that this search for knowledge, this search for meaning, it's a journey worth taking. Whether we're, you know, exploring ancient texts or deciphering the secrets hidden in Gothic cathedrals, or even just taking a moment to connect with that inner wisdom, there's always something more to discover, both within ourselves and in the universe around us. Beautifully said. This has been an incredible exploration, really secret knowledge, ancient wisdom, the mysteries of consciousness. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on this deep dive. It's been uh, enlightening, to say the least. The pleasure was all mine. Until next time. <laughs>